Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss on functions and some of the built-in functions in Python. A function is a block of code which runs only when it is called. Now, how to create a function? We have syntax for this. Keyword called def followed by a function name and within parentheses the parameters are passed. Below this, you can write the function statements. In the last line, return expression. There are many built-in functions. First one is absolute function, which is represented by a keyword abs in lower case. So abs function, it returns the absolute value. That means when you pass a negative number, it returns the positive number. Example, I have a variable value minus 94. But when I call this function abs of variable, I get plus 94. Say for example, if I add here minus 94.39, I would get plus 94.39. Next, all function. It returns true if all the elements of a list or a dictionary or tuple is true. Else it returns false. Also note, it returns true even if it is an empty object. Let us see an example. List with 4, 5 and 1 as my element. Obviously, these are not false values. Doesn't have 0. It is true. Therefore, all the elements are true. Therefore, my output for the first example is true. Now, in the second example, line number 6. List 2 with 0, 0 false. All the values are false. Therefore, my output will be false. Next, I have list 3 in line number 11 with 3 values that is 1, 6 and 7 as true and 0 and false are false values. Therefore, not all the values here are true. Therefore, my output should be false. Next, I have list 4 in line number 15 which is empty list. Therefore, my output will be true. I can check even the condition. Therefore, I am writing all of x greater than 0 for variable x in the list 1, 2, 3, 4. That means what are the values greater than 0 in this list? 1, 2, 3, 4. All the values are greater than 0, right? Therefore, my output will be true. Done. Hope it's clear. Next. Any function. Any function returns true if any of the element of a given iterable that is list, dictionary or tuple are true. Else it returns false. Example, I have a condition here for x greater than 2 in the list 1, 2, 3, 4. Greater than 2 here, 3 and 4, correct? 1 and 2 in the list are less than 2. Any of the elements, at least 2 elements are true here. Therefore, my output will be true. I have called the function any of list and I am printing the result here. My output will be true. Next, min function, that means minimum function, which returns the smallest of the values in the list or dictionary or tuple. Example, I am printing minimum of 1, 2, 3. Minimum value is 1, correct? Therefore, my output will be 1. Next example, 70, 9, 11. Now, let us make a small change here. Instead of minimum, m a x max of 70 comma 9 comma 11 what is the maximum value with the pupil given 70 so 70 will be my output if it is minimum it will give me 9 as the output if it is max m a x it will give 70 as the output even here the maximum value would be 3 done next binary function which is given by the keyword bin b i n now x is equal to binary that is bin of 3 Binary function, it returns the binary value of the given integer. Example, 3. The binary representation of int 3 is 1, 1. What is the binary representation of 4? 1, 0, 0. Binary representation of 5 is 1, 0, 1. It prints binary values. 0 B represents binary value. Done. This is the binary equivalent of int 3. Bool function. Bool, as we already know, it is true or false. It is used to return or convert a value to boolean value. As we already know, 1 represents true and 0 which is low represents false. See, bool of 1 will give me true 
bool of zero will give me false. Next, slice function. Slice object is used to specify how to slice a sequence. Here is the syntax: slice of start, end, and step. Start. This is the starting index where the slicing will start. Stop represents where the slicing of the object stops, and step is optional argument which determines increment between each index for slicing. I have a list with five elements: one, two, three, four, five. Line number two. I have declared a variable called slice one and calling a function slice of three. This three represents the stop value. It is telling to stop the slicing. For this five element, the third element. That is why I am getting the output as one, two, three. Understood? Slice two start at one means, as we know already, the indexing will be zero, one, two, three, four. Zero to four, which is nothing but five elements. Therefore, if I tell start at one, it should start at two. So it is starting at two and printing start value, which is two. Now it should increment by two. That means move two steps forward, which will give me four as the output. Therefore, four will be my output. Now, increment four by two. I don't have anything here. If I add six here, if I increment this, six would have been printed here. Since I have no six here and my stop value is at five, I'll be stopping my slicing here itself. Done. Next, some function. It gives us the addition of the elements in the list. This is the syntax for sum. Sum of iterable comma start. Iterable is nothing but list or tuple. Start is a value or number to be added to the sum of the iterable. Let us take a look at an example for better understanding. Now I have list. Now I am printing sum of numbers. That means it will add this elements and print me the output. See, sum of numbers means adding one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus one plus four plus five. It will add all these elements, and I'm printing it here. That is twenty five will be my output. Next, I don't have start parameter here. Two parameters should have been right. I have not mentioned two parameters. Only one parameter that is numbers. I want only these numbers to be added. Now, with the start parameter called ten to be added to this, so what it does, it will add these and add even ten to my output. Therefore, I am getting thirty-five as the output, not twenty-five this time because I have two parameters declared here. Sum of numbers, comma start value is ten. Done. Next, callable function. Callable function will return true if the specified object is callable. Else it returns false. Example: I have a function here, def x of parenthesis followed by colon, and I have statement a is equal to five. I'm checking if it is callable or no. Yes, it is callable because I have followed all the rules in declaring this function. Correct. Hence the output will be true. Just I have taken x is equal to five, and I'm trying to check if it is callable. I don't have def here. Correct. I don't have function variable here. Correct. I just have One variable which is assigned with value five. That's all. So definitely it should be false. I don't have proper function declaration here. Therefore my output will be false for this. Next, character function which is char in lower case. It returns the character that represents the specified Unicode. Remember Unicode is nothing but ASCII values. ASCII values are the numeric representation of each characters. Say for example. Capital A is assigned with the Unicode or ASCII value sixty five. Capital B sixty six like that. I have a ASCII value given sixty nine. C H R of this variable. I should print this character now. Therefore, my sixty ninth ASCII values equivalent character will be capital E. Next, length function. It is used for finding the length of an object. Example, I have a variable. With a string hello comma world exclamatory sign. Next, length of string I have given a variable which is equal to length of l e n of this variable. Now I should print this. I am getting thirteen as my output. Count the string length one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Even the space is included, therefore 13 will be my length of my string. Done? Given blank space also will be considered. Next. Power function is nothing but to find the power. That means, say for example, 2 to the power 3 I should check. For that I can directly just give power of 2 comma 3. Syntax, power of POW of 3 parameters x, y and mod. x represents the number whose power should be calculated and y represents the value raised to the x. Done. And mod is an optional one. That is, it performs modulus operation. Modulus operation returns remainder. Done. Let us see an example for better understanding. I have power of 2 parameters 2 comma 3. Done which is 2 to the power 3. It is x comma y. x to the power y. 2 to the power 3 is 8. Therefore, I am getting 8. Now, in the second example, as you can note, I have 3 parameters. 3 to the power 4 and also modulus. Modulus operator value is 10. Therefore, what will be my output? 3 to the power 4 is 81. So, 81 modulus 10 should be my output. Therefore, 81 modulus 10. What will be my remainder? 10 8s are 80 and 1 will be my remainder. Therefore, I get 1 as my output. Thanks for watching this video. Please do share, like and subscribe.